Greetings from Bern, Switzerland. Now you might be asking, Martin, what are you doing in Bern? Well, I'm visiting the International Space Science Institute, otherwise known as ISSI for an international collaboration. But I had to stop by Einstein House. This is the house where he stayed between 1903 and 1905. And 1905, of course, the famous year when he made completely massive waves in the field of physics. Not only did he solve Brownian motion, he solved the photoelectric effect, that won him the Nobel Prize, and he solved special relativity and fundamentally changed the way we see space, time, matter, and energy. Quite frankly, I don't think a scientist of Einstein's caliber will ever exist again. Science has become so big, I don't think you can make such big changes in disparate areas in the way that he did particularly in that year 1905. And he continues to make waves, pun not intended, with the gravitational wave discovery recently shown directly by advanced LIGO. We keep on testing his theories, in particular his theory of general relativity in lots of different ways that we can, using very different techniques. Gravitational waves now a potential technique that we can use in the future. But it's really hard to specifically pin down where we have tested and where we haven't. But that's not to say people haven't tried. For instance, in this graph you can see here, they've, they've done it in terms of things called the potential, which you can think of as basically how overall strong the gravity is due to massive objects and energy. And then also in terms of the curvature, which you can think of how much does gravity change as I move around in space and or time. And you can see there's a lot of places that we haven't or currently aren't exploring. So that offers opportunities to potentially break Einstein. And a lot of scientists do take a lot of glee in saying that they are trying to prove Einstein wrong. So here are the five ways that scientists are trying to break Einstein. Number one, by looking at gravity on very small distances. Now, General relativity works fantastically well over very large distances where we need to care about it and particularly over distances in the solar system where generally Newton's approximation of general relativity that he found earlier is perfectly valid. And you all know, I'm sure, the inverse square law of gravitation, that the strength of a gravitational field falls as one over the distance away from the mass squared. And that's a property of basically being in three-dimensional space. But some people say that perhaps over very small distances that might change. String theorists in particular are trying to merge gravity and quantum mechanics, which breaks down at a scale called the Planck length. That's the scale you get when you combine all of the constants, Planck's constant, the gravitational constant, the speed of light, into a special way to form a length. And that's where everything goes out of the window. It just, just does not work whatsoever. And so string theorists have devised a theory whereby they say, well, actually, for the maths to be nice, we need 10 dimensions. And so over very small length scales, perhaps of the order of the Planck length, maybe a bit bigger, there might be these curled up extra dimensions that we don't see. But gravity could see when you probe it over very small distances. So in, for instance, at the LHC, when they're upping the energy, they will be trying to see any effects of extra dimensions that could be seen and gravity over very small distances. So maybe the inverse square law becomes a slightly different law when you get very small and we'll see those extra dimensions. Or maybe they just don't exist at all. Number two, we went from small, now we'll go to big, universal size scales. Now, we do cosmology, which is the study of the universe as a whole, but there are some rather weird things we've had to throw in the mix in cosmology to make things sort of make sense, including cosmic inflation, where the universe rapidly expanded at its very early stages in an exponential fashion, which is absolutely massive, and the mysterious thing called dark energy, which is some 60% of all mass and energy in the universe, but we do not know what it is. Now, one of the ideas is Einstein's cosmological constant. This was a thing he added to general relativity before he knew about the Big Bang. He called it his biggest blunder. Some scientists have now put it back in, but quite frankly, we don't know if dark energy exists. And there are some people who will say, no, it doesn't exist. In fact, general relativity over very large scales is wrong. Number three is by looking in different directions. 
Now, we often treat the universe as it's pretty much the same everywhere we see and in every direction we look. And that, that's quite true when we look at the stars and, and the cosmic microwave background. It pretty much looks exactly the same in every direction we look, and we think the laws of physics don't change in all directions. In fact, that's one of the reasons why we can talk about quantities like angular momentum from this lovely symmetry of nature. But some say, well, maybe it isn't. Maybe there is a preferred direction. And there are scientists right now who are looking for cosmic neutrinos from deep parts that are basically unknown, to be honest, that have incredibly high energies and can be detected in the ice in Antarctica. It's an incredibly cool experiment. Number four, by looking at incredibly weak gravity. Now, particle physicists, for instance, just ignore gravity. It's not part of the standard model because its effects are so tiny compared to the strong, weak, and electromagnetic force. But maybe we can measure them, and there are other places in the universe that we can look, and we can look for any signs of differences from general relativity's predictions about gravity. And finally, number five is by looking at incredibly strong gravitational fields. Now, the upper limit of that is in fact the inside of a black hole. That's as strong as gravity as you can get. It would be fantastic to be able to measure inside a black hole what is going on. In fact, that's what they did in Interstellar. But, of course, there's a problem. It's called a black hole for a reason. Light cannot escape beyond the event horizon, and we'd want to look inside of that. So anything we found out would not be able to be communicated to the outside world. And frankly, in my opinion, that means it's not science. So those are the five ways that you could try to break Einstein, and there are plenty of people doing that right now. I wish them luck, even if I don't think they're gonna prove him wrong at all, because he was quite a clever chap, and general relativity is just a lovely theory. Thanks for watching this video. You can check out my previous video about lightsabers uh, by clicking here. And do remember to like and subscribe. That would be great. Cheers.